welcome to episode 14 of season 2 of the Ubuntu UK podcast. It's Friday the 25th of September 2009 and in this episode we're going to have an interview with Matthew Paul Thomas about Software Center. We'll cover the latest news and events. We've got news about Old Camp followed by another command line love. Then the first of the interviews from OSS Barcamp and a delve into the ecosphere. Finally we'll have your feedback I'm Davey, and with me this week are Simon. Hello, mate. Hello, Simon. How are you doing? I'm tired. <laughs> Why is it whenever we do a Friday recording session, we end up going well past midnight? Oh, <laughs> not enough cake. <laughs> not so, enough cake. It's only 11 o'clock now. Unless you plan on <laughs> spending another hour recording an intro. <laughs> <laughs> we could do. Uh, Ramblecast. So what have you been up to, Davey, as you've not asked me? <laughs> um, I, I've, I've actually been doing um, some servery stuff, and that's been one of the main things I've been doing. I, I didn't quite expect you to shoot on me first, that's but, all right. but thank you there, Simon. I don't think any of us were expecting um, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, one of the things I did was, um, um, oh, oh, I've been getting some packages into the archive, mm-hmm. uh, so that, that's something I've been doing this week. Um, and Simon, what have you been doing? I've been uh, having fun, actually, with uh, my EPC. Uh, I gave it a revamp. I made it into an IP cop box. But then you realise it wasn't the best desktop distribution? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. I was, Great for uh, transmitting packets from gave one me interface a, yeah, to another. That's, but that's right. Pepe gave me a, a desktop, an old desktop, and um, uh, I put IP, or I had IP cop on it. And it was too much of a power drain, so I used the EPC and went, oh, yeah. What was a power drain? That big box thing you gave me. Oh, It was the... like using hundreds and hundreds of watts. Yeah, that's why I'm not using it anymore. Yeah, yeah. So that's I put why it... I'm now using a Viglin <laughs> instead of using that. So I put it on the EPC and that, that kind of worked, but then a lot of my EPC is a desktop, so or is a sub notebook. So I put uh, Crunchband Buck on it, uh, and that's pretty much it, to be honest. Superb, superb. Simon. Yes. Thank you. Tony, what have you been doing? Uh, I went to Ask Bar Camp last weekend in Ireland, in Dublin. Um, so did you, didn't you, Dave? I th- I, and when yes, Simon I asked did. you what you did, you didn't mention it at all. Well, Dave had had a lot of Guinness. <laughs> okay. He forgot he was even there. No, but the thing is, if, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, we were both at OSS Bar Camp. Did you have a good time there, Tony? Yeah, it was really interesting. Everybody was very welcoming. Uh, Laura... From the Ubuntu IE community, who whose surname nobody ever says, <laughs> okay. um, who uh, organised it all, did a really good job, um, and there were lots of interesting talks. Um, and, and Dave gave one, and it was about eucalyptus, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, about the old cloud stuff. Was yes. that interesting? He'd spent literally Minutes. time preparing it. <laughs> it was great. Well, sitting in the talk oh. before, were there, were there any pictures of um, koalas? There eating? was pictures yep. of a lol cat. Oh, I hate low cats. And he yeah. hates low cats. He told us this about three times. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was a special time. Um, no, but it was a really good weekend. And the uh, barbecue afterwards was great. And that was about three euros for all that food. It was a subsidized barbecue. Wow. And uh, Laura kept buying his drinks as well. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Super. So we owe them, And we got some interviews as well. So we're going to put some of those in over the next few shows. So I think, as Dave said in the intro, we've got um, a couple of the guys from the Ubuntu IE Loco. Yes, we've got Magic and Shane. Yes. yes talking about the, the Ubuntu Irish community activities. Yeah, and we've got some more that we're going to put in the next few episodes as well. And they were recorded on a rather noisy little landing, it has to be said. Yeah. Um, so you might hear a few interruptions or yeah. background noise, but you know, it's was the best this the one recorded find. just outside the lavatory? Mm-hmm. Yes. If you want to go yes. there, yes, yes, it yes. was. Okay. Um, yes. We did occasionally have people coming up thinking we we're all queuing for the toilet. But, or just you know. looking worried while we were watching them coming in and out of the yeah. toilet. Thrusting a microphone in their face as they come out. Mm, the how was that for you? Uh, <laughs> okay. And, um, and, and, and to- um, no? yes, we've just done Tony. Yeah. So, Alan, what have you been doing this week? You took a week off from the podcast last week and you've already forgotten all our names. Oh, <laughs> <work. laughs> <Does that work? laughs> um, late. Well, actually, we, in our little notes page where we all put what we do each week, somebody else has filled in mine. I didn't put this in here. <laughs> Sitting on so, my what? No, uh, it says free cycling and getting praise for it from podcast fans. Yeah, Is yeah that true? You free cycled something. You sent us all an email about it. So you free cycled something, and somebody sent an email saying, "I can't believe I'm getting something free cycled <gasps> from the uh, Alan Pope of the famous Ubuntu UK podcast." That's right. Aww. Yes. I wasn't, I wasn't going to mention that, but seeing as you brought it up. <laughs> he also said you do a lot of work for charity, is that right? <laughs> I don't like to talk about that. But he would like to thank his friends and family for helping him get here. I Actually, I, I thought I only really tried FreeCycle because 
there's been this whole brouhaha about people splitting off and making Freegal a separate entity from FreeCycle. And it reminded me that I've got loads of stuff in the garage I want to get rid of. So I thought, I know, I'll try FreeCycle, give it a go. Can't be that hard. And the annoying thing initially was signing up to some Yahoo group thing and having to wade through that before mm. I put the stuff on. But yeah, people came and picked up the stuff that I gave away and I now have a slightly less full garage. I, I seem to remember someone offering uh, Ubuntu CDs and uh, Ubuntu help, you know, helping uh, on FreeCycle. And um, they got told by the list admins that they couldn't do that. Mm. I think he got banned, actually. Yeah. yeah. For, for doing it. For do trying need, to give away free software. So do you need free software when you just give it all to Simon so he can start to take it home with him? Well, that, that actually works quite <laughs> well, well yeah. Put it on eBay. You can put it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've also got Laura. Laura, what have you been doing this week? I also went to Dublin to OSS Bar Camp. Oh, of course you did, yes. I did, and I saw your entertaining presentation. Thank you. And and you did a very good presentation, You're I seem to remember as well. tactful, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. No, um, I know. I, I really liked your slides, actually. They, thank they, you. They, they, oh, they get were, a room. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. They were very different to, um, to, to a lot of slides. They were very full screen. Did they have lolcats? No. Uh, they no. weren't that different. They had no. photos. What, were, yeah. what was your talk about, Laura? My talk was about the um, project I mentored last year. Which is called? Called Info Slicer. Okay. And um, where can you get that? <laughs> Activities.sugarlabs.org. All right. Can I try it out in some form? On sugar. On a? Fedora laptop. Oh, oh. I know. On a one laptop, a child laptop. No. no. Sugar on a? Still, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Or on sugar on a stick, which cracked Davy up last time for some reason. Um, yes. And I did a presentation on that, like a 10 minute lightning talk, which went very well until the video refused to play. Ah. Because, it's because of, you were using a live CD, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. The desktop was using a live CD, which didn't yeah. have codecs installed. Ah. But even when we tried to install them, we discovered that it was a Windows codec because the video had been made on Windows. Oops. Which runs fine on my laptop, so I must have some dodgy codec on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yes. But it was good. It was good. Yep. And I found some people willing to work on the project. Mm. Super. Sounds like a fun packed show. We're very honoured to be joined again by uh, Matthew Paul Thomas from Canonical. Hello, Matthew. How are you? Hello, Ellen. It's great to be back on the show. Lovely. That was very professional. I like that. <laughs> um, we wanted to get you on to talk about um, something that's fairly new in, um, in Ubuntu, and that's the software store and um well could you tell us what it is <laughs> sure the ubuntu software store is a utility for browsing thousands of available applications for ubuntu and installing any you like the look of at the click of a button it also lets you survey the applications that you have installed already and remove any that you've installed and no longer want okay and uh, that actually sounds a lot like synaptic um uh, how does that it actually does. vary uh so it's actually more similar to add remove applications than to synaptic um, because at the moment it doesn't show you the non-application packages just the the graphical applications that that are especially registered to show up um, so our objective for version one is just to be at least as good as add remove applications uh, for version two we will be expanding to um, do much the same job as synaptic does showing you all packages letting you um, look at the the fine details of dependencies and, and conflicts and, and that kind of thing uh, if you really want to. And what was the what was the goal of, of creating this given we already have add remove programs, we've got synaptic, we've got you know app get on the command line, you know, we've got lots of ways to get software. Why why do we need another one? Right. So this I guess this is a bit like the old joke about the uh the programmer who is despairing at all the text editors in the world and he goes to another program and he says, I'm going to solve this problem, I'm going to write another text editor that's going to replace them all. <laughs> and the old programmer beats him over the head. But uh, we, we want to unify the, the various tools that are, that are being used so that we're not having a separate tool for uh, applications and non-application packages, a separate tool for uh, the GDB for installing standalone Deb packages right. and apt on CD for handling offline installation and this kind of thing. And we could have done that by building on Synaptic or building on add remove applications or um, building on something else entirely. I, I am not the expert in that area. I just gave Michael Vogt, who's the lead engineer on it, uh, a list of what we wanted in version one, what we wanted in version two, 
what we wanted in version three and said, okay, what's the best base to base this on? And his conclusion was best to start from scratch. Wow. So are we going to lose any functionality um, from the current packages that we already have or are or already using? Uh, there are a, a couple of minor details about add remove applications that are not in uh, are not implemented in the store yet, um, uh, like special handling of the Edge Ubuntu uh, package suites. We didn't quite get time to implement that uh, okay. in time for Karmic, just because we didn't know about it in time. Okay, <laughs> um, but it's going to be in future upgrades. It's going to be in a future version. Yes. Cool. Okay, so with, um, I mean, if, if I write an application and I get it into the Ubuntu archives, I get that in Synaptic for free. Yeah, it will already be there. Correct. Um, how do, I mean, is that going to be the same thing with, with this application, or is, is there a process to actually get inclusion there? So for at least versions 1 and 2, it's going to work just the way that the Ubuntu repositories always have. Um, you, you get it, you write your software, you, you persuade somebody to package it for Ubuntu, <laughs> you get it into the um, official Ubuntu repositories, and it, it shows up in, in all the native um, packaging tools. Now, we recognize that while this works very well for a lot of upstream projects, um, it doesn't work quite so well if you have something that is quite time-dependent. For example... Um, Antivirus or something? Ant- antivirus software is, is one no, example. That was a if, stupid example for Linux. but I, <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, eventually it's going to be an issue if we yeah. get popular enough. Uh, another example is games where you want to release them on the same day because you have um, publicity material or, or whatever um, organized for Windows and Mac and, and Linux or whatever platforms you're releasing it on and you, and you want it to be available on that day. And... So we, we are going to have to work out a system of letting uh, software vendors make their software available whatever day they like um, and, and not tie it to the Ubuntu release schedule. Right. But it would st- but, so does that mean those, those third-party programs or those applications, would they still be in the repository or are you linking software store to third-party external... Our, our plan at the moment is that they will be putting their um, packages in PPAs okay. on, on Launchpad. And so we will, be able, we will have a mechanism for establishing trust of PPAs, saying, okay, the PPA is allowed to install new packages, but isn't allowed to overwrite the kernel and that kind of thing. <laughs> um, and, and so third-party developers can put their software in the PPA and it shows up in the store. Okay. Now, currently, we've got a handful of applications already in the canonical partner repositories. Um, so, so, looking at this, um, will that will this actually replace that that current repository that, that that's available with some applications in? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I'm not an expert on on that issue, but that is a, a service that canonical provides is doing the packaging ourselves for okay. uh, commercial vendors who want to do that, and that's how the software ends up in the partner repository. So, and we will continue doing that. Now, something I, I mean, I've only played a little bit with, with this application we're talking about. Um, I, I understand that there's, there's a screenshot um, facility to be able to actually see what the application looks like. Yes. Um, how, how is that screenshot actually created? Is that created by a person or is that actually created in code? I mean, how, how does that actually happen? That, uh, the screenshots are, are contributed. There is a, a screenshots.debian.net server that you can... Um, upload your screenshots we may uh, supplement that later on with a uh, an ubuntu service just so that we're not um causing a huge bandwidth bill for the guy who runs that server <laughs> and i assume that that will be done on launchpad as well because launchpad knows about all the binary packages and so you'll be able to say okay this is the screenshot of that binary package or if, it, if it's a game this is a, a short sample video of of the game being played oh. things like that That'd be cool. Um, one of the things that has obviously cropped up as a result of the name change, because it went from App Center or something, was it? Um, yes, so the original so, code name was App Center. And now it's called Software Store. And that, that right. word store has rung bells in a lot of people's heads that obviously mm. this is going to be a, a method for delivering paid content as well as free content. Yes. And so far we've got repositories that all contain you know, free software. What's, what's the plan in that area? So the plan's never been a secret. Uh, it's been on the wiki page for months and months that in version three, we plan to sell software, uh, sell commercial software, let 
I mean, there, there is some software that uh, Canonical sells already through the Ubuntu shop. The Codex and the, stuff like that. The Codex and the DVD players, and, and it would be much easier to buy that if it was in the store and used the same credit card details as you enter for your Ubuntu One account, for example. And that's what we plan for, for other third-party software as well. Presumably it's a bit too far off to have a bigger list of things that might appear in it, much as we'd love to know the sort of things that might be there. That, yes, that's, that's yet to be decided. And sure, it's, surely it's, it's going to be anything, away. anything that's paid for software on Ubuntu, really, that's already available. I mean, surely, as long as you get the buy-in from the, the third-party vendor, whoever makes that software, yeah. to sell it through, I guess it could be anything. You know, exactly. Game, exactly. Games, yeah, there, there are some game that's vendors it. who are selling their, their game for Linux already. It's just more difficult to install than it needs to be mm. and more difficult to pay for than it needs to be. See, and we aim to solve both both those problems. Yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to buying DB2 through there, actually. Yeah, was it $10,000 or something? <laughs> Somebody on Twitter, uh, Ubuntu Diego, has asked if we were able to buy laptops through the software store. I, I think he might have got. <laughs> I think you would need to go to the Ubuntu hardware store for that one. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think he's got the wrong end of the stick there. <laughs> um, so, okay, now, th- this is currently in Karmic. Now, Comic obviously isn't out yet. If people wanted to try it now, but they didn't want to necessarily try the bleeding edge Ubuntu version that's still in development, can they try it on a currently supported one? As far as I know, it does not run on Ubuntu 904 because it depends on things like App Demon and WebKit GTK and, and various um, other packages that aren't present or aren't present in new enough versions on 904. So it is a, is a Karmic only feature. So that's a good reason to try development version, I guess. Well, I mean, get testing. It's a, it's it's less than one month until Karmic comes yes. out. Yes, yes. So it's not yeah, far. The, the beat is coming out soon, and if you if you want to help out and report bugs and hammer away at it and and test it and see what goes wrong, then we'd be glad to have your help. Will um, Synaptic still be installed? Synaptic is still installed by default. Yes, in Karmic. Okay, so even if if there are show stopping bugs that prevent you from being able to install software, you can still revert to. Using Correct. Synaptic. Well, if there are any show-stopping bugs we, and that we discover before release, we will pull it out and replace it with that remove application. Of course. Yes. Now, I mean, this is going back a little bit, but um, I mean, so something Ubuntu does is it finds the, the best stuff out there to include in a default distribution. Um, do you think there'll be a time when, um, when the Ubuntu software store only has basically the best in an area that doesn't come installed by default? So, so rather than the entire repositories just the actual good stuff. Does that make sense? So you're saying, would it limit the software? Yeah, yeah. So rather than having everything there, which can be very confusing, I mean, if you wanted to search for like a a, a spreadsheet application, there's probably about three or four different ones of varying quality. Hmm. So so do you think it will just show the best of breed on there or or everything? At the moment, we have few enough applications that we don't need to do any filtering like that. (laughs) What I would rather do Aren't we lucky? (laughs) (laughs) Well, depends on your point of view. But what we plan to do is introduce ratings and reviews for applications. Ooh. Yes. What's a little star? People can like put little stars. People can start from one to five or whatever. And And leave feedback? And leave feedback, exactly. Uh And that way people can tell, is this application good or is it crap? regardless mm. of whether it is an open source application, a commercial application, proprietary, whatever. That's going to have fun implications for translations and moderation. and Yes, so we, we probably will need some moderation of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just the look in Dave's eye, the sort of evil glint he had when he heard you be able to commentate on packages. Well, the fact that he could put his own, being a developer, he could put his own package into the archive, <laughs> rate it five, and then go around rating everything else one. And then I'll make it proprietary. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, that way you'll take over the world, Dave. Now, the other thing we talked about in, in UDS was about your, some of your more general usability work outside of the software store. Um, now, we've just seen new features and things coming into Karmic in the last few days. Mm-hmm. Um, what else have you been working on other than the software store? Um, unfortunately, I can't really talk about that right. much. Okay. Okay. I can tell you what I've been doing this week, okay. which has been uh, trying to uh, redesign the session menu which is the menu that appears at the top right of the screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, It it lists um, who's signed in at the moment and uh, lets you set your instant messaging status and lets you log out and restart and shut down and so on. And it's a little bit strange to be able to set your instant messaging status and restart in the same menu. Right. 
I'm yeah, it's now it's now a sub menu, isn't it? You could set status, and correct? You set away or whatever, correct? Uh, and that that sub menu opens to the left because it's the thing at the right of the screen, and so it's that's kind of awkward as well. So I'm looking at various ways of rearranging that. We, we we might leave it as it is, or we we might find some much better way of doing it. One of the problems that I've seen in previous releases, and 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 I know people have mentioned about this, is whenever you have a system which lets you list potential users that you could switch to or log in as mm. and click on them, um, there's a problem if your system is connected to a um, like an LDAP system, some directory that has a lot of users in it. Right. You end up populating the screen with a bazillion you know, users. As I understand it, this only shows you the first six. It won't actually show you all of them. Mm. How are you going to work out which ones to show? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I mean, this is this is one of the things you have to when you're designing software. You have to consider all the edge cases, all the corner cases. You know, think, w- what's going to happen if if I'm the only person using the computer? What's it going to happen if somebody else has signed in? What's what else is going? What's going to happen if there are a hundred user accounts on the computer? Uh, mm-hmm. All this kind of thing, and that's something I will need to discuss with the engineers. Can we tell what were the uh, half dozen? people who were most recently logged in for example mm. because they're uh, people right. who are most likely to want to log to in switch again. to yeah. yeah one other thing i wanted to ask you there's been a, a kind of theme over the last few releases of, of of gnome really and i think historically people would have said i don't know if you agree that gnome is like the mac interface and kde is more like a windowsy kind of interface at a very high level gener- generally speaking if, well I guess GNOME is a little bit more like the Mac than KDE is. And KDE yeah. is quite, I mean, it, it feels... Hang on, hang on. Are you basing that purely because one of them has their menu at the top and the other one has their menu at the bottom? No, um, if, you, if you go to... Okay, the reason why I said that is because if you log on to the latest Karmic, there's a menu in the top right-hand corner with your name. Mm. Yes. OS X has that. There is a menu in the top left. OS X has that. The icons are now monochrome. That's the same as OS X. The logon screen, which has a list of users and a picture of a computer on top of it. And when you press the user, the window shrinks a bit, and then it asks you for the password. That's the same as OS X. What I'm getting at is we are going very far that way. And the question this was all leading up to was, do you think we'll ever have what's often called the global menu that the OS 10 has where there's a menu fixed to the top of the, uh, the screen yeah. and it doesn't appear in Windows. And the application uses it and take takes it over effectively. So yeah. whichever application has got a focus, it has the menu at the top yeah. of the screen. So if you all alt and tab to another application, the window at the very top of the, the line at the top of the window changes. It's possible. Uh, <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't rule anything out. I mean, there are advantages to, to that, that's that kind of system. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it saves a bit of space. It if you have multiple windows on the screen at once, it's uh, generally quicker to use following Fitz law because the, the top of the screen is an infinitely high target and there's various other advantages like that. There's also uh, disadvantages in that you, you can't use it with focus follows mouse, for example. Um, Which I love. It can be a bit more tricky to use if you have a, a, a slow trackpad. Uh, so you need to weigh these things up. It would certainly, it would certainly be quite difficult to implement because we have applications not just using gtk mm. but also using Qt, mm. also using vcl that the toolkit that openoffice.org uses oh right and also using so as in firefox and thunderbird and miro and programs like that so it would be a lot of work to do that it just, it just seemed to me that we were going in that direction already and it just seemed that's the one thing we haven't well, well okay there's lots of things we have we don't have that the the mac has but it just seemed a a big difference it's it's not a goal to be like the Mac. I mean, we want to be better than the Mac. Okay. And and it's inevitable that, that if you're going to overtake somebody, you're going to get closer to them first before you get further away. <laughs> very good. Uh-huh. That's, That's a very good, good answer. answer. <laughs> but the the we we try to do things because they're the right thing to do rather than because any other system is doing them. Sure. Cool. Excellent. Um so I asked you before what you've been working on recently. Is there anything else that the team, the usability team or design team or anything that you're involved with has been working on for this release that you want to shout about? Uh, well, the, the design team has been um, quite busy with, with lots of artistic stuff. You've, you've seen already, if you've installed today's updates, the new colour changes in the human theme. Now, Al- um, Alan has. How would you describe those colour changes? More brown. More brown? Mm. Oh. Is that a good brown or a... 
actually it's yeah. quite nice. I quite like it. Okay. It's it, it's um brown. Yeah. For, for for a long time, the actual login thing um, with the whole white bar going on there, I thought, what's that all about? But now we've had the latest artwork drop. It actually makes sense what's going on there. Yeah. It's 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 really coming together. The, the so we have a, yeah the, the new GDM theme. There's there's lots of new theme work, a new set of icons, and humanity. And there's uh, backdrops as well. You get new, loads new of backdrops. Yes. Backgrounds. We had this supplied. fantastic response to a uh, an invitation we put on on Flickr, saying tag your your photos as or your artwork as a candidate for inclusion in Ubuntu. And we we had thousands of responses. It was fantastic. There's a, a wiki and, page for it as well, I think. Yeah. Yes. See, that, no, that's kind of odd because previously um, the same thing's been trying to be achieved, but the, the, I understand there wasn't much community response. So, what do you think's actually caused there to suddenly be a big influx of, of artwork? I don't know. I think it's probably better publicity. We we have learned how to um, to advertise things and invite contributions from artists and designers. And one of the things I did with the Ubuntu software store when I published the specification is say, okay, here's where we need help from artists. Here is where we need help from interface designers. Here's where we need help from programmers. And within... It was very explicit, wasn't it? Very explicit. And and within about an hour of announcing the project on the mailing list, we had our first contribution. It was amazing. I think what also helped with the backgrounds thing is using the infrastructure that's already where Flickr and all people had to do was, yeah, that's a good picture, tag, and that's mm. it. And that's all they had to do. They, they, they didn't have to, have to go out and take new photos that were of a subject matter that was appropriate to Ubuntu. All they had to do was just tag the ones they already had. Mm. And I, th- I think the, the, the mere fact that we have a design team now and the design team is, is doing stuff uh, has attracted um, more artists and, and usability-minded people to, to be interested in helping out. Mm. And... We mustn't forget, of course, the 100 Paper Cuts project, which has yeah. fixed many, many uh, small interface glitches in, in Ubuntu software. Yeah, I, th- I think we, those of us that run Karmic, forget about those things because there's the, all the tiny incremental changes. We've talked about this before. The tiny incremental changes you get when you run the development version. If you installed, I don't know, Hardy now mm. and then upgraded all the way through to Karmic, it's a massive change in the, in the user interface and the way even... I today the boot, the shutdown thing I love it. Shut the machine down. You get a, a white Ubuntu logo in the middle of the screen. And it just sticks there. There's no scrolly bars. There's no All right. nothing. It's just a logo in the middle of the screen. And then just before the machine turns off, it just fades down and then it goes off. It's Excellent. lovely. That is just forget everything else. That's the <laughs> best thing. In but th- things like that can have a big impact yeah. on users. You know, people who, who, well, even somebody who's a geeky person like you, yeah. Alan, is impressed by it. Well, it just feels more solid. It, it fe- it and feels, more professional, I yeah. guess. It feels like more of a polished, rounded product. Mm. Yeah, the, the way I described it is, is cinematics. Mm. You, you, want, you want the person to feel like they're really being treated visually and, you know, that, that we have taken, we have put some care into it, mm. that we have, have made it all make sense visually. Mm. So um, it's my understanding that, that I mean, we've had an artwork team uh, for Canonical working for Ubuntu for quite a long time now. Right. Um, but now the design team is quite a new thing, isn't it? Yes. Um, now, I mean, how, how do the two teams sort of interact? I mean, surely there must be some sort of boundaries going on there. Um, I, mean, we, I mean, clearly you must work together. But how, how, how does that work? I mean, do you, do you just put designs to the artwork team for them to implement it? Or, I mean, how, how does that work? I, I don't deal with that um, side of it myself. That's uh, Matt Tomaszewski and Ken Weimer and David Siegel who, who work on the artistic side of it. I, I know they do work with the artwork team quite a bit, but I, I, I don't follow those discussions. Okay, so um, are you more? would you define yourself more of an artist than a, than a coder? I mean... Neither really. I'm, I, I'm an interaction designer. I, I decide where the buttons go and, and what they're labelled and things like that. I... <laughs> I I can tell you what is a good icon and what is a bad icon and why, but I can't really draw icons myself or do anything like that. <laughs> That's an <laughs> interesting place to be. To be able to say, no, you've drawn a rubbish icon, <laughs> but I can't draw a better one. <laughs> okay, so we had a question from Richard Johnson, who is Nick Sternal, I think. Who we interviewed a few weeks ago. We did, yes. Um, and he has emailed in about, is anybody working on a version of Software Store for Kubuntu yet? There was somebody in the IRC channel just a couple of days ago who said he was interested in working on it. I, d- I don't remember who it was, but um, 
there we go. There, there is plenty of foot. Yes. So you have to look through the logs, Richard, and find out who it was <laughs> and go and pester them. <laughs> Unless it was yourself, of course. <laughs> I don't think it was him. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much for joining us, Matthew. And thank you for coming to Studio B to, uh, <laughs> to join us. I, as I was saying to you earlier, I, until today, I had no idea that Farnborough existed. <laughs> <laughs> I wish That's I... a lovely place. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Alison, Oracle CEO, has said that Oracle won't spin off MySQL to allay the EU's concerns about Oracle owning both MySQL and Oracle Database after they acquire Sun. Oracle's database and MySQL are aimed at different markets, and he says Oracle Database would never compete with it. Or is it the other way around? <laughs> MySQL would never compete with Oracle. Mm. Is MySQL like the freeware version of Oracle? <laughs> you get that, and then you get like a nag screen come up every 30 days. In order to save this transaction, you must <laughs> pay 20 pounds or upgrade to Oracle. I thought a lot of love had already gone from uh, MySQL anyway, so I don't Post- know. Postgres is where it's at, or CouchDB. CouchDB, it? all about the couch. The nightly builds of Firefox now include Mozilla's implementation of WebGL. WebGL is an emerging standard that brings 3D graphics to the web. Does this mean that I can... <laughs> Simon looking perplexed. Really? Why? Why do you need that? <laughs> Does this mean I can have my web tabs in a cube and spins around? <laughs> that'd be so cool. Within the browser, that'd be You'd awesome. get really confused. You could have your desktop spinning one way and then the cube <laughs> inside. The other way. Go, oh, I gotta be sick. Bunch of users puking everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 3G inside the window rather than your tabs. Okay, so what's the actual use for it? Well, you could write games, 3D games. Oh, okay. Mm. Do you have to wear 3D goggles for that? No, no. If you want. So you can take them off now, Dave. I hereby predict Richard Stallman's going to have a fit about this. Why? Well, because people will implement games and it'll be all server-side code. Oh, Put your hands yeah. in the air if you care. Hang on a minute. 3D <laughs> desktop tower defence. <gasps> oh, Ooh. moving on. <laughs> moving on. Don't get me into that. Nortex's new $300 tablet PC runs Ubuntu. With its 8.9 inch touchscreen display and 8 gigabyte of solid state, the tablet can run for three to four hours of eight, eight AA batteries. Eight. That's a lot, lot isn't AA it? batteries. And that gets more through more things than the Zoom does. Isn't that kind of not very eco friendly running off not, the not generally. AA batteries? Well, well if they're rechargeable, yeah, okay. But well, it's a great bit of kit so. if you're on the road. Has anybody I mean, know? I was going to say, does anybody know what, you know, it's a netbook spec, essentially, is it? It must be. With an no, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's a funky little CPU, like a Via or something. <laughs> yeah, but on the road, but you would need, like, a, you'd need a trailer full of batteries. No, no, you just stop at a new shop, fill it up for new batteries, move on. If you, oh, if you, it's not particularly you could Have a look at the pictures, though. It looks really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but it has got nice innovative things, like it's got USB ports on the inside. So you could hide your USB uh, stick. They don't have to hang out the side oh, of the machine. The there, inside. inside. Yeah. So you, t- you, you open a flap and then put uh, the USB, like your 3G dongle is that like inside. An, is that like an in your outy belly button? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Thanks, Dave, for uh, that. Yeah, um, IBM and Canonical have collaborated to release the IBM client for SmartWork, uh, which is a collection of Lotus software on Look. top of Ubuntu. It all runs on Ubuntu on a netbook or on thin clients or older desktops and laptops. When we say Lotus software, we're talking Smart Suite and Lotus Notes and Domino and stuff like that, aren't you? Maybe. Well, you put this in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to talk about it, do there's, you? There's, there's, a no. video, there's a video with Mark um, sort of saying how much he loves... This is this article, isn't it? Yeah, the video? yeah, yeah press release. Saying it's, it's all about... Um, it's great to have IBM and Canonical working alongside each other and, and seeing all the IBM stuff in Ubuntu. So remember? we'll include that video in the show notes. Gnome version 2.28 has been released with a whole host of new things, including time tracking applications, improvements to the Empathy Messenger, and uh, a new version of Cheese... <laughs> Oh, it's cheese is the thing for webcam, yeah. isn't it? All it's optimised for wide screens now. Uh, what, yeah. cheeses? Yeah. yeah. So that's the most important thing. <laughs> so so, 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 way so if, you've got a really, cheese. if yeah. you've got a really fat face, then it works really well for you. <laughs> is, is, is that what you're saying? I'm not huh? going to make any comment there, because there's far too many jokes we could do. Turn, turn your webcam on and find out. Open box for the win. My face doesn't fit on. The Ubuntu Global Jam will be the 2nd to the 4th of October. 
And we've got a few uh, venues now, haven't we, Dave? Yes, yes. It looks like we're going to have two n- in near the London area. We've got one in Birmingham. And one in Wales. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're all over the place. Yeah. Brilliant. Anything in Scotland? If someone wants to run one in Scotland, that'd be fantastic. There, there is still time. Yep. Lug Radio Live, 24th of October, New Hampton Art Centre, Wolverhampton. Although there are no tickets now available, so... Oh. Um, so don't turn So if you've already got one, see you there, but if, if you haven't... Uh, you volunteer to be on the crew. Looks. There's still a few crew places left in which or, you can get in free. go anyway, go and look at the sites of Wolverhampton, and then yes. the next day come to Og Camp. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. When's that, Dave? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think, yes, yes, it's on the 25th, on the next day. It nice. is. The doors open at 10.30am, but you get an extra hour in bed because the clocks are going back. Anyway, there is a comedy gig for the benefit of Bletchley Park at Bloomsbury Theatre in London. It's on Tuesday, 3rd November, with Richard Herring, Robert Llewellyn, oh, that's, um... Crichton. Crichton, yes. And uh, Robin Ince, and maybe Stephen Fry. And finally, Fosdem, next year, 6th and 7th of February. In Going Brussels. to talk about free and open source software. In Brussels. Maybe in Europe. there. Indeed. Oi, our theme's better. No, it's not. I think you've broken it now. Mm, guys, maybe we should get on with the promo. Are you wondering what you're going to do with that spare day after Lug Radio Live this year? So were we. But then we had a brainwave. I've wondered what that burning smell was. Why not run a joint bar camp-esque event nearby on the Sunday? So nearby, in fact, that it'll be in the Connaught Hotel in Wolverhampton, the official Lug Radio Live Hotel. It's called Og Camp. No, not Odd Camp. That's Og with two Gs. Odd Camp might be more appropriate, though. There'll be all kinds of talks going on during the afternoon. You can talk, too, if you want to. Plus, there'll be a live recording from each podcast in the main room. Ubuntu UK and Linux Outlaws under one roof. So put it in your diaries now. Sunday, October 25th at the Connaught Hotel in Wolverhampton. Visit ogcamp.org for full details. Sounds like a fun-packed event. So it's not long now until Og Camp. No, it's getting scarily close, in fact. I think it's five weeks as we're recording. The plans are coming together. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> it's all going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's all fine. Um, and we've got more sponsors than we had uh, last time, so we've got to announce the Linux Emporium, who are going to provide us with some hardware and things for the weekend. So thank you very much in, indeed to them. And I think we just mentioned that Viglan had just been added last time. So they're giving us some prizes, as are Canonical. Uh, Linux Format are our media partners. I'm not quite sure what that means, but they are. It's great. Thank you for the support they've given us. <laughs> Isn't there going to be an advert in their magazine? There is. There's going to be a full page advert. Yeah. Yes. That's basically what it means. That's quite scary. Yeah. We're proper guys. We're going to be in printed oh God. press. I Does that mean it. we actually have to be there now? Yeah. We have somebody's this is no going, going back. Yeah, at the moment, I'm sleeping on a park bench until somebody gets their acting gear. But uh... <laughs> Oh, well, you've joined Dave there. That's his traditional location <laughs> I mean. in Wolverhampton, isn't it? Um, and Bitfolk, and co- of course, and the Open Learning Centre, who are our, uh, our first sponsors that we had. So thank you very much indeed to them. Go and buy things from them. They're all great companies. Yes, lovely people. But of course, we are always looking for more sponsorship. So if you guys want to, you know, help out, come on. Yeah, we've had a few people um, volunteer to be on the crew, which is great. So I think we've probably just about got just enough people to kind of help look after the rooms. But you know, a couple more wouldn't hurt. So send us an email to the usual address if you're interested in helping out. Um, but it is a bar camp, so please come along with bright ideas about what you could do to talk. Um, mm. Anything vaguely open source related, free software related, free culture related, media, free society. It doesn't have anything. to be a long talk. It can be a nice little short lightning talk, anything. Yeah, there's some ideas on the ogcamp.org website, but hopefully they might trigger off some even more inventive ones. So, yeah, come along and participate. That's the main thing about and it. And come and say hello to us. Yeah, because we're going to be doing some sort of live recording. Yes. We don't know quite what yet, do we? No, we're, we haven't quite nailed that down. Yeah. we we'll be hiding in the corner somewhere. Talks are in progress. Yes. Come along, it's going to be fun. It's time for another command line love. Did I say that right? Yeah, that's not bad. Pretty good. So I've been playing with IP Cop, and uh, these two are relevant um, to that in that um, there are two different ways of checking what files have open ports and connections to the internet run from the command line. Quite useful. I've used them on my VPS. Why, Why would you want to do this? Just to see if there's anything, it's a possible way of seeing if you've been infected in any way and there's something on your system which is trying to get to the internet. Oh, okay. Mm, simple as that. Right. And you can have a look to see what, as it says, what files have open ports and connections out to the internet. 
Cool. Good. And that uses, well, one of them uses the good old watch command that we talked about in previous episodes. <laughs> we love yeah, so you could use, uh, yeah, you could use it to uh, check for connections or as a clock. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just such a multifaceted uh, tool. Useful. Excellent. That's another one of those command line loves. So I'm here with two representatives of the Ubuntu community in Ireland, seeing as I'm in Ireland. Do you want to introduce yourselves and say what it is that you do? Uh, I'm Shane Fagan and I um, manage the Irish Translations team. Okay. Uh, my name is Maciek Danielski and I uh, am the uh, Irish Ubuntu community point of contact. Okay, cool. So, the Ubuntu I- Irish, uh, Irish community, local, local team, how big is it? What do you guys get up to? It's hard to tell in numbers how many of, their, of us is, there, is out there. Um, we do have regular meetups uh, with the Irish Linux user group every month. We also run uh, bug jams, or as newly introduced, it's uh, global jams anymore. Um, we have events just like today, the OSS Bar Camp, which is uh, organized by one of our members. Um, but I'd say... In at any particular moment when the event is going on, we would have, say, from 10 up to 30 people participating. That's really good. It sounds like you've got quite a vibrant community if you're doing events and, and running bug jams and things. That's what we're trying to do. We are trying to get uh, people motivated uh, and stay enthusiastic, which isn't always uh, the case. We like Just like other locals, we have people coming in and getting out of the community or people that are very enthusiastic for the first month, but then... In, realize it's not really for them or they're not very enthusiastic about uh, the local community anymore they want to be part of the of the global community and they go and submit some code and you know it's it's something that every local is seeing there's people that are that have joined the commu- the, the local community and are there and that would be the core core people you would have the five people that are still running it and try make things happen and you would have all those other people that come on and get out so what is it the point of contact does uh well originally because because we not like other locals we do not have the hierarchy of the of uh the official hierarchy uh what, what i do I'm, I'm there when i joined ubuntu ie and i was uh appointed the point of contact um, what I'm trying to do is motivate people trying to get events organized um, that's that's what I do and, and if anyone want, would like to contact me the, the contact details are there on the website uh, ubuntu-ie.org or on the uh, wiki pages uh, ubuntu. Uh, no sorry wiki ubuntu.com I suppose uh, slash Irish team Okay, now I suppose, Shane, you want everybody who's in the Irish Loco to help out with what it is that you do. Well, anyone who can really help. Like, Irish is kind of a minority language in Ireland. It's very, you know... So, um, just just to, to clarify, you're, you're in charge of the Irish translation of Ubuntu? Yeah, Irish translations team. Like, you know, just the actual team. Um, just trying to organise things, like, um, with the GNOME upstream and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a little bit, you know, balls in the air. It's very, you know... So, so when you say the Irish language, um, is that actually like Irish Gaelic, is it? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of like, um, well, it's comparable to Welsh and Scottish and all. Like, it's it's um, it's kind of a minority language. Not many people, like, use it fluently or maybe not use it as often as you'd think. You know, it's kind of hard to, you know. Does that make it difficult to find people to do the translations? Um, yes, it is very hard to find people to do translations that would be kind of qualified to do the um, particular... Um, like technical terms and it's very hard to do that sort of thing. I think for countries like Ireland and other Gaelic uh, countries where the, the, the actual language is, uh, is used by the minority uh, is to get the schools involved with the languages still being taught and get the kids actually involved. Uh, they probably, I don't know, because I, I, I'm, I'm not originally Irish, but um, children would... W- that's when they learn the most, and they, that's where they actually could can use the, the language fluently. So I think involving the kids for the next generation to use this to the operating system in their native language would be a great benefit. So is Irish Gaelic still actively taught in schools? Uh, it's being taught in schools, and there there is few regions in Ireland where 
uh, all subjects are being taught in Gaelic. All right, okay, cool. Yeah, well, um, I got in contact with some of the Gael schools, like what they call um, Irish-speaking schools, like, um, and it's kind of interesting. Like, it's har- um, it's hard to kind of get in there and like um, get people interested in um, using their operating system in Irish. Um, but it's it's that's the most difficult thing about it, you know, um, actually getting the interest in there and um, getting people to actually help you know with the translations because well like me personally I'm okay at Irish but I wouldn't say I'm great at the technical stuff so I'm able to suggest stuff but maybe somebody more skilled would be able to you know say that's right or that's wrong and that's where Launchpad comes in and suggestions and picking up stuff. Now it's quite apparent that English is widely used in Ireland Um, but but what actual variant of English do you use? I mean, what what, what locale of that do you use? Well, I'd say it counts as UK English, but like um, we actually have our own particular, um, you know, mannerisms and stuff like that. But it wouldn't really be, you know, I'd say it wouldn't be counted as a separate part. Like um, I know that like on Open Office, like the UK, um, the UK locale is fairly, you know, we I use that. <laughs> because like the dictionary is um, there's no actually Irish dictionary in Open Office which is kind of hilarious you're doing well then because I can't work out how to set it from the US one so oh, yeah. you're one up on me <laughs> oh, sorry Dave um, so how much of the Gaelic Irish translation is complete for Ubuntu well um, it's actually fairly complete like um, because of the GNOME upstream um, there's and the KDE upstream like there's a lot of it actually done actually KDE is nearly complete um, but GNOME is a little bit off um, but there's a few there, like we still need help on the GNOME and, uh, and obviously as soon as something has changed or maybe a word's changed and probably when GNOME 3.0 there's going to be a lot of um, you know stuff untranslated which would be very you know which we need to translate back you know Now you were talking today about Launchpad how does that help you do the translations? Well it's a very simple interface that's the that's the main thing that, um, that helps it um, but well it's well I mentioned in my talk today that um, that an old upstream guy. He um, he wa- kind of wanted us to use their um, their system rather than um, use Launchpad because it's it's not that it doesn't get pushed backstream like, but it's um, it's just that it's a little bit more difficult to actually get stuff in if he's not controlling it, you know. So it's more you know easy to predict. You know. Um, I think that's the great thing about the uh, Ubuntu community and, and the launch, Launchpad as a tool itself because uh, even though you do not have technical knowledge you can, you can just jump in then and, and, and tr- uh, just start contributing and it's either being approved or not or you're going to be given some gu- guidelines or a few links of the documentation you should read about but it's, it's a great starter point for people to start getting involved in projects motivated you to start doing this project? Um, well, I started using Ubuntu and um, I was mainly involved in answer tracking and stuff like that um, and I just seen that like the, the translation team was a little bit lacking like in terms of actual leadership but in terms of numbers, like really um, and I thought that like maybe if actual people started using it and uh, translating it it'd become more used and more um, more people use it and really that's kind of the main point about it you know um, I thought Wales schools and all might need it and you know it, like they already use Firefox in Irish um, they already use like a lot of things like and they pay money for these particular tools to you know use in Irish you know, it's so, so how much of the Ubuntu desktop is actually currently translated into Irish Gaelic? Um, well, I I went I, I haven't installed my own computer um, and it's it's very um, it's actually fairly well done. Um, you know, it's, it's not it's not it's not too bad. Like yeah, I'd say you can it's usable and um, and I'd say a school could use it. But there's a few t- um, like like tool tips and stuff like that that aren't really that aren't translated yet. But that's kind of that's the only thing. Like there's generally most of it's done. You know. Okay, so. How important is it for things like Ospar Camp that's happened today to be in Ireland and that the Ubuntu Irish local community can get involved with it? Oh, it's it's very important uh, because there's not many open source oriented uh, events going on in Ireland at the moment. Um, but people like Laura Tchaikovsky, who's uh, one of the core members of uh, Irish Ubuntu community, is making things happen. And we're very grateful uh, that... W- we, we actually have a person like that uh, on, on our team who is very enthusiastic and has connection all over the place and it's just 
it's just great seeing her working on, on, on projects like that. And she refuses to come and be interviewed as well, the, the crazy fool. But she's done such a lot of work putting today together and it's been a real, really a big success, I think. Um, cool. When are the next events for the Ubuntu Irish Loco team happening? Uh, we're looking to have the uh, Global Jam in October, just before the Karmic release. Um, unfortunately, the, um, the venue was uh, refused. At the US Bar Camp happened today in DIT. Unfortunately, because of the, uh, the budget cutbacks, they are they are not going to host uh, uh, the global jam for us. But uh, so we're looking into organising some uh, other location for for the global jam. If we can't have it for two days for the whole weekend, maybe we could have one. I am actually uh, also member of the uh, hackerspace tog in in Dublin, so uh, I'm talking to the committee there to uh, to have something done for at least uh, one day. Just physical space, internet access, and to all other locos, that's pretty much all you need. And if, if we won't be able to host it at TOG, i probably do it in my house. Have five, <laughs> six people over, have a few drinks, have fun, and uh, contribute to Ubuntu. Good. So you're uh, the point of contact for the UK loco team, Dave, so we can come to your house and do Is that right? Well, you're more than welcome. I think I've actually invited you guys down for a recording on multiple occasions, but you can't be bothered to drive. That's because you live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> well, 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 this is true. But, um, so, OK, we've covered quite a lot of the technical stuff that the Irish team actually do. Um, but, but do you actually um, have, like, a social scene as well? I mean, obviously, we're all out tonight drinking. But, I mean, do you also... <laughs> but, 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 but do you actually have, like, a release party as well? Is, is that something you do in your loco? Yes, uh, we did have uh, three release parties as, since I'm on board with the, uh, with the Irish logo. Uh, some were more successful than the others, but in particular uh, the Jaunty one was very good. We did it in a different location, which is a different pub, um, than, than all the others. And, and it was a success, yes, absolutely. We got some uh, new users, we got uh, some support from uh, UbuntuShipIt.com. Um, it, it, it's great. And actually, thanks a million to Canonical for providing all those free CDs that we can share with other people. It makes a whole difference when you can actually present uh, not just a burned at home CD, but an actual professional finished product. I think the ones for this release look really classy. The way they redesigned them, I think they look really, really good. So, OK, you, you mentioned some of the resources where people can get involved earlier on, but if someone lives in Ireland and they want to get involved with the Irish logo, how would, I mean, I mean, from what I'm seeing, it's a very welcoming team so far. So if someone's like, you know, not a huge geek or something like that, how would, they, how would you recommend they actually try and get involved? Um, the best thing is uh, just come on to our IRC channel, uh, hashubuntu, uh, dot, uh, IE. just ask if you don't have any technical knowledge you would like to get involved by all means do and if you don't know where to start just ask us on IRC or on our mailing list uh, there's always something to do uh, we need people uh, who are maintaining the, the wiki pages we need some people for, uh, for our website now and again, we, we need someone uh, to be an operator on an IRC channel because not everyone can be online at the same time. Um, there's, there's, loads of, there's loads of things you can get involved in. Translation is one of them. Excellent. Well, if you are an Irish Gaelic speaker or you live in Ireland or you just want to help out with the Irish Loco, get in touch with the guys. They sound like they'd be more than pleased to uh, hear from you. And uh, I'd like to thank you for... You know, helping out with the event and um, you know welcoming us here to Ireland has been a great day. So thank you for talking to us, Magic and Shane. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks very much. We've got the Ubuntu Friosphere. That was really made up on the spot, wasn't it? It was. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. Friosphere. Indeed. All right. Gimp uh, is to get a single window mode. You know how when you open GIMP, you get like four different windows appear. There's like yeah. a toolbox yeah, and this right. and that. You put one on each desktop. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, and then when and you close it down, there's always, you have to remember which one is the one which actually kills the program. <laughs> oh. Well, they're um, looking at making a single interface, like Photoshop, like Photoshop and other, yeah. to make people familiar, to make it, well, make it easier who are, for people who are familiar with tools like Photoshop to transition. So get familiar with GIMP and you'll know how it works.
Do you know if there's going to be an option to keep it's it going to be it switchable? Oh, yeah, good, good. It's a toggle. Also, saw some feedback. I can't remember where it was recently um, about someone complaining about the name of the GIMP. It was from Software Freedom Day, I think. You've got to be kidding! Someone came up to one of the volunteers and said, a kind of expressed a concern. Not not that it's a really bad thing, but it's just a bit of an odd name. You know, hmm. it is. It is you a know, bit of an odd name. I mean, Pulp Fiction again. You know. It's where we know, where we culturally tend to know it from, unless you're in those circles. Yeah, but yeah, we've got name first. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure whether the, the actual uh, the term is portable into other languages or not. Mm. Um, but I, I know certainly in the English language, if you try and say, it, I mean, um, my elderly uncle-in-law, uh, I tried to say to try that on Windows, and he didn't actually know what that term meant. But I, I did feel somewhat uncomfortable actually Playing. saying to try that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mark Shuttleworth has announced that the next Ubuntu release after Karmic 10.04 will be uh, firstly a long-term service released, and the code name will be Lucid... Leaping Lice. Will be Lucid Links. Uh, the event of the summit will be in Dallas in November. Dallas. 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 With an eye. Da- <laughs> Dallas. I don't know. Uh, it'll be in the place that the soap opera in the So the important things there are... Lucid, no, but, oh, lucid, lucid links. links. Yes, named after deodorant. And um, <laughs> well, it's not. In, it's not called links in America. It's called Axe in America. Oh, and the yeah. deodorant, not yeah. the not the distribution. <laughs> no, they're going to call it lucid, <laughs> lucid, lucid Axe. Axe. <laughs> that sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there's three things, right? There's right. the name, which is yeah, you know, lucid, lucid Links. links. Um, there's the fact that it's LTS. Yes. Which was a bit unclear whether it was going to be ten oh four or ten ten. Right. It was going to be a LTS, which I'm sure is good for Davey because you're looking at doing. You've been talking about doing asterisk in uh, one point six in Karmic and then getting ready for doing it in. Well, yeah, yeah, one point six is definitely in in Karmic now. No, no, I meant uh, for yeah. getting ready for getting ready, yeah, yeah. having an LTS but, release. But I was actually convinced it wouldn't be. Um, really, I, I thought this one would not be LTS. I initially thought it would, but why? Well. Oh, I mean, are we going to have GNOME three in um, in Lucid no. Links? And yeah, I would have thought that the next LTS would be GNOME three, perhaps. Why? Why? Yeah, surely it's not good to put new, unproven, untested stuff in an LTS. Yeah, but surely it's good to put stuff in that you can support for that term of time. Mm. Same yeah. thing with the Firefox. Yeah, th- th- the two three thing, wasn't it? Mm. What was the third thing? Uh, the fact that um, UDS is in Dallas. Dallas. Because it was, it was up in the air about where that was going to be. Right, sure. Either Dallas or, I think, Miami was the other option. No, the other one was uh, Austin, Texas, wasn't it? No, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, yeah, but Austin was the other one I heard as well. No, I didn't know that. And finally, Launchpad 3, released on the 23rd of September. Excellent. What's in it? Um, it's a much nicer UI. Well, it's, it's really nice. some people said they don't like it. I personally do, do like it. Yeah, everyone has There's, an opinion about you. The, 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 there are a few things I find a little bit frustrating. Um, one of them, for example, if you go to a PPA, uh, you have to press an extra button to be able to view the information. Not about an extra the, button, <laughs> really? It is, tr- it is true. If you go to a PPA and you get and you want to you want to copy and paste the line into your sources list, yeah. you have to press an extra button to reveal that line. Oh yeah, okay, it wasn't that, but that's another one. Yeah. The, the other thing is, if a if a, if a team have you filed a bug? Well, no, because these are my personal feelings. I don't think it's actually saying it's wrong. It's well, just file a bug and they can determine well, whether it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Hundred um, paper cuts. Uh, <laughs> well, it's something which has been introduced. Isn't it so. open source? Couldn't you just take a copy of the code and make your own launch? Launchpad. <laughs> 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 Buy your own bugs against it. <laughs> Fork it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, one of the other ones I found is if a team... Davy pad. It, 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 <laughs> <laughs> dot Davy dot com. <laughs> um, no, Somehow w- really like Davy pad. <laughs> will <laughs> will <laughs> not fix. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be bothered to fix. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, well, one of the other things is if a team is by invite only, because there's a notion of teams you can join on Launchpad, um, if, it's, if it's that status, it, you, it doesn't make it immediately obvious on the, on the actual page. You just think... Where's the join button gone? Oh, okay. It doesn't, it doesn't make, say right. you can't join this team. Hmm. You know. Oh, right, okay. That sounds like a bug. Paul, in the new IRC channel, Ubuntu-UK-podcast, uh, uh, threw us this link after hearing the software snobbery segment uh, from a couple of episodes ago. Sensia Director of Marketing Colin Crawford was pressed for specifics of his company's new radio device. After his CEO reminded him that the new radio was based on Linux, Crawford remarked, I don't like using the word Linux about a radio. 
It's weird, isn't it? Well, if it's fair enough, it's an appliance, isn't it? Really? Yeah, well, I guess. It's like having a... a yeah, but why not like mentioning Linux? Well, what, because, it's, because it's connotations. People don't care what they're... He's director of marketing. Words like that matter to him. Okay, yeah, that's a fair point. He's marketing. <laughs> it's like, like phone, really, isn't it? It matters to us if we've got a Linux running phone, but the vast majority of people will just get an Android phone and not care what runs what running underneath it. Yeah, fair point. Is it flashable? That could be also be a concern. People don't like their products being flashed. Mm, TiVoization. Mm. Mm-hmm. We heard from Simon Elwood, who has been trying to download the podcast using the Windows version of Juice, which is an open source cross platform podcatcher client. He says It seems to work pretty well for BBC World Service and BBC Radio 4, but not for the UK Ubuntu podcast. It never seems to think they're complete, and like a goldfish, downloads them at every poll. Hmm. That's why our stats are so high. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it. Um, I'll download it and uh, have a play with Juice, see what's wrong with it. Yeah, and if anybody else out there has tried it, email in and let us know. Mike Crow emailed to tell us he loves the podcast and that he tried out the command line love from the last episode, which made a nicely formatted version of Man Pages. Whilst his script works, it inhibits much of Man 1's functionality. In particular, it does not support specifying the manual section. Compare Man Open and Man 2 Open, for example. Here's my alternative that maintains this functionality and automatically falls back to standard man if any options are supplied. Yeah, and he's given us a, a copy of his updated code, hasn't he? We'll chuck that on the, on the website. Yeah, see in the show notes. Craig Callum, who suggested the documentation topic in the last episode, emailed in... At the moment of writing, though, uh, there are no links in the show notes on your websites. Are you going to add some? On another note, he um, wasn't particularly happy with us um, talking about the Mexican podcast that being non-English. Yeah, I think that maybe came out wrong. I, and I don't, I don't think we dealt with that right. I think maybe, um, looking back at it, we maybe seemed dismissive of a non-English podcast, and that's not really the feeling we had. But I've listened back to it, and yeah, it does sound a bit like that. But that's not the way we intended it to no, sound. That's just not the way we are, is it? We've had a just a moment from Chris Jones. Ah, the Terminator the, developer. He's not the Terminator, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> That's Arnold Schwarzenegger. I really can't imagine him naked going into a pool hall and asking someone for his boots well, and Well, there his was jacket. that time at the Ubuntu release party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to imagine okay. him, I meant. <laughs> hey, folks, this is Chris Jones with a quick announcement about my new project, Lifesaver. It's a screensaver for GNOME uh, that searches through sites like uh, Twitter and Identica and also now FriendFeed for uh, things that people are saying about Ubuntu and then meanders through them visually so when your computer is idle, it's advertising what folks are saying on the internet right now about Ubuntu. Obviously, this has some potential for interesting or surprising things to come back in the results, but if you're not afraid of a bit of internet opinion, then you might want to check it out. If you're feeling particularly adventurous, you can poke around in our gconf settings and change the appearance of the tweets and dents, uh, that is, colours and fonts, or you can change the keywords that it'll search for. Uh, as I said, by default, it'll just search for posts about Ubuntu, but you can have several or you can change the default ones, however you want to do it. Uh, so that's basically all there is to say about the screensaver. If you want to check it out, you can have a look at our Launchpad page, which is launchpad.net slash lifesaver. Enjoy. Oh, nice that's one, Chris. Oh. oh, there's the time up again. Thank you for that, Chris. It was good. Thanks for listening and thanks to everyone who took part via Twitter and Identica. If you'd like to get hold of us, you can email the show via podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can leave us a voicemail in a number of ways. Telephone 0845 508 1986 or VoIP podcast at sip.ubuntu-uk.org. And finally, you can Skype us if you love the evilness at Ubuntu UK podcast. You can send us your comments and get updates from recording sessions on Identica or Twitter where we are at UUPC. Alternatively, if you're into IRC... You can chat to us via the hash Ubuntu dash UK dash podcast channel on Whoa. the free yeah new channel on the free node. Join our Facebook fan page. Search for Ubuntu UK podcast. We welcome uh, just a moments command line loves reviews or rants and feedback, both positive and negative. So please do get in touch. Thank you also to our community of mirrors listed on the website. <laughs> we have a community of mirrors, <laughs> yes. do we? It's yeah. quite a gathering of them. <laughs> Oh, look, <laughs> they all get together, do they? <laughs> they are very welcome. They do their own podcast. <laughs> I think it's a long time to go. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.